Hi folks, in this video we're going to be talking about Cloudflare. Cloudflare is a CDN, a content delivery network. It's also a proxy. And what I mean by proxy is I mean that when somebody goes to my site, uh, .com for example, they're first going to go through Cloudflare and all of Cloudflare's optimizations before they actually hit your server. This is a great thing because Cloudflare offers uh, a firewall, uh, speed optimizations, which include caching and deferring of JavaScript, as well as a CDN, which means that if I'm in California and uh, I'm pulling a, a website that's normally based in New York City with Cloudflare, it's going to actually pull the static assets like CSS and images from a cached server in California closer to that user. So what that does in the long run is just make sure that all of your website content, all your application content, gets delivered to that client, to that browser, uh, faster than it normally would without a CDN. So long story short, what do I have to do to set up Cloudflare? You go to your GoDaddy registrar, your Namecheap registrar, whichever one you use, recommend Namecheap. But regardless, you go, you click on your domain, you go to your name servers within that domain, you can find articles on where to uh, find your name servers for each of these registrars uh, just by doing a quick Google search. Once you find your name servers, you simply just update those name servers to whichever name servers uh, Cloudflare is telling you to use. You can see here, these are the two name servers that it's telling me to use. I would update this in Namecheap uh, for both my NS1 or NS2 type of records. So just updating that in a Namecheap or Cloudflare will do the trick. And now all of your uh, domain DNS will be managed through Cloudflare. What do I mean by that? Instead of your, your DNS uh, records, which you can see I have two of those here for breakfix.space, uh, both the www as well as just the A record for the non www uh, in Cloudflare, uh, those can normally be managed through a, a registrar like GoDaddy or Namecheap. And we don't want that because if we don't um, change our name servers to Cloudflare, we can't take advantage of the optimizations that I'm going to go into shortly. Before I do that also, just know it's super easy to add a new site to Cloudflare. You literally just go to add site. You enter your domain here. It goes through a quick scan. Uh, once it does that, you click uh, continue setup. And then when you do that, it'll take you over to a screen like this where it'll show you the records that it found. Just ver verify or validate that you have indeed grabbed all of your records from your previous domain registrar, GoDaddy, Namecheap, etc. Uh, verify that all of those records are in there. If so, just click continue. And then that way, when you do update your name servers in, in GoDaddy or Cloud, or I'm sorry, in GoDaddy or names, uh, Namecheap, it will ensure that um, nothing goes down. Your website don't go, doesn't go down. You don't lose any uh, subdomains or any redirects or anything like that that you might have set up. So I'm not going to go into that because that's pretty straightforward. I already have breakfix.space already set up in this video. I'm instead going to go through each of these options here and tell you why I choose certain settings, when to turn them on, when to turn them off. Um, so on and so forth. So let's start with the overview tab here. This is indeed exactly that, just an overview. The only reason I usually end up using this tab is mainly for this uh, toggle here. So under attack mode, obviously, if your website is literally under attack, if you're running something like Crunchbase or uh, TechCrunch or something along those lines, which by the way, both of those websites actually do use Cloudflare uh, the last time I checked anyways. Um, so just kind of a, you know, a feather in the cap of Cloudflare. Um, two really top high traffic sites are using Cloudflare for the exact reasons I'm going to talk about in this video. In any case, under attack mode or development mode, I mainly only use the development mode. Never have I had to use under attack mode. Hopefully you don't either, but just know that that's there in case you know you're getting attacked and you need to just uh, you know, lay down the law in a really heavy way to drop some immediate security onto your website. I usually use development mode quite often when updating a, a staging environment. Sometimes when updating a production environment, what this allows you to do is disable all of the optimizations that Cloudflare is currently applying to the website, like caching, etc. Because what you'll find is sometimes when you're pushing updates up to your website, by not having um, that caching and all that stuff turned on, you can just see your updates immediately. Uh, if you're not seeing your updates immediately and you have Cloudflare Flare enabled, it's quite possibly because um, it's cached and it just hasn't updated yet because of Cloudflare. If that's the case, just click on development mode, set your site to development mode. When done, just click disable, all set. Analytics, honestly, I don't use this screen very often. If you get a very high traffic website, um, I can see how this could definitely be useful, but just know that you do have the ability to see bandwidth, unique visitors, threats, things of that nature uh, to a website uh, on this tab here. So just a nice little analytics uh, metric screen. DNS, as I mentioned earlier, this is where all of your records are going to be found. So a record could be a redirect, it can be a C name, it could be, um, you know, maybe you have an SPF record, maybe you have uh, email set up, obviously, like MX records set up. Um, all of those will be managed through Cloudflare now once you change your name servers. So just, yeah, as you know, or at least maybe you don't, but if you um, are wondering when you change your name servers to 
um, another provider, whether it's a domain registrar or a proxy like Cloudflare, um, what that means now is that your DNS is completely managed through Cloudflare. So for instance, we primarily use uh, DigitalOcean and Amazon Web Services. DigitalOcean does have a domain, uh, a DNS management you know, interface that I could use if I wanted to. In most cases, we don't use that. Instead, we just use and offload all of the DNS management to Cloudflare. So in any case, moving on, we have all our records in here. You can add them through this really nice snazzy interface here, each record. Uh, comes with the option just to leave it automatic TTL. This is usually fine unless you're dealing with mail records where you might need to set a specific TTL, uh, so on and so forth. So um, scrolling down here, this is where you can always find your name servers. Again, this is where you update those in your registrar. And honestly, for the most part, I don't really know most about what was happening below that fold there, um, and you probably won't either. The crypto screen here is very uh, important in my opinion. The reason being is another recommendation that I'm going to make here is going to be Let's Encrypt. Uh, Let's Encrypt is an open source and free SSL certificate generator. And what this means is that when you're using Let's Encrypt, you you don't necessarily even have to use Cloudflare for this, but it's kind of a nice feature to have. But when you're using Let's Encrypt, um, you're no longer at the mercy of kind of the, the SSL certificate authorities. Um, I'm trying to remember some offhand, but honestly, I haven't even used them in so long that I can't even remember some of the names. Uh, Let's Encrypt is what we use for every single website nowadays. Uh, and what that gives you is an encrypted connection between everything that's web traffic to and from your database and your website. So um, very important, obviously, if you're storing credit card information, if you're processing credit card information or if general people are filling out forms. And in general, it gives your users a sense of security when they see that little, you know, lock, that little secure um you know, notification right here in the browser. It's also gonna give you this HTTPS that you're seeing here in front of your URL. Lastly, the uh, maybe most important reason why to use it in a lot of cases is for the general SEO, search engine optimization viability of your website when you're using HTTPS or SSL. Google nowadays looks at uh, websites that do have SSL encryption, and they actually help the rankings uh, in the search engine results. So if you're ranking number five, you enable SSL, who knows, maybe you get to four, maybe you get to three, maybe it, it jumps your rankings all the way up to one, maybe it does nothing. Either way, in the end, your users feel more safe using your website. So long story short, uh, use Let's Encrypt. I'm going to record separate videos on Let's Encrypt. I usually use Let's Encrypt directly through uh, for WordPress websites, directly through Roots, roots.io. Uh, and the Trellis framework makes it really easy um, to use Let's Encrypt. So uh, if you're curious more about that and you want to learn more about WordPress specific development, I highly recommend you watching the uh, WordPress development series that I have also on the BreakFix uh, YouTube channel. Long story short, uh, use SSL, ideally Let's Encrypt. And what's nice is on top of that, you can also secure the initial connection between that client, that browser, that person coming to the website, uh, and Cloudflare by enabling full SSL here as well. So this means that at every stage throughout the user's you know interaction, whether it's you know first coming to the website or then submitting something through the website to the database, that you will have a full uh, stream of SSL encryption um, every at every you know channel along the way. So uh, really great, another you know advantage of using uh, Cloudflare. So uh, for the most part, haven't used much of this stuff that you're seeing below. Uh, HTTPS, always use HTTPS. Once that's on, you can sure go ahead and set that to on. And again, for the most part, haven't messed with too many of these settings below. Usually it just works quite well out of the box. The firewall, uh, again, usually I just leave these settings set to default. Under I'm under attack, which is really super useful if you ever are under attack. If you have a site that's just generally known to have a higher level of threat, uh, you might want to just go out of the gate with the high level of uh, firewall setting here. Um, but yeah, in general, I usually leave it at medium. Uh, hopefully it helps uh, somewhere along the way. Haven't had too many threats in general uh, on most of the websites here uh, just by using the default settings. So um, you can see that throughout a lot of the Cloudflare options here, you're always going to see this button upgrade to business plan. So they do have a paid option. It does get quite pricey. So uh, if you're building a higher you know, trafficked website that's generating a good amount of revenue, I would say go ahead and explore some of these paid options here and see if they're viable. Uh, but again, in most cases, we don't have to worry about that. And uh, you can just you know do well without these options. So uh, next up, and maybe the most important in my opinion, is you have the speed option here. Under speed, we have JavaScript, CSS, HTML. So yes, I want all three of these to be minified. So what do I mean when I say minified? Uh, for example, CSS. When you're writing really well formatted CSS, there's a lot of indentation, there's a lot of nesting, there's a lot of spaces. 
things of that nature that can cause a uh, bloat within your CSS file. You might have multiple CSS files that are that are being included within oh, the main CSS file, things of that nature. What this minification or this auto minify option within Cloudflare is going to do is it's going to put all of that text on one line. It's actually going to remove all the formatting of your JavaScript, your CSS, your HTML, so on and so forth, so that those files are as small as possible. When that f file is smaller, as you might guess, it means it's faster to load when the visitor comes to the website. Okay. So uh, scrolling down here, again, we have a couple of options here. I don't use either of these, but again, if you're uh, trafficking or running a high trafficked website, these might be great options to consider. The other option here that I do want to mention that is free is this uh, rocket loader option. And what this does, which usually I see a GT metrics uh, score, GT metrics, my G key is stuck. So GT metrics uh, .com is a great way to quickly scan a website and get a general analysis from both a page speed, which is uh, run by Google, as well as a Y slow, which is run by Yahoo uh, metric results uh, on your website. So any, anything below usually a 90 is not a great uh, score. And usually there's some work that you can do. What I've seen with using Cloudflare as an FYI uh, is that we can have a site that's getting an 84% grade. And then we just enable these options that I'm talking with you about now, this minification here, and then also this rocket loader option here, and we can see our scores jump up above 95%, which in a lot of cases, people think you shouldn't even bother trying to get, but with Cloudflare, again, it, it does a great job of, of getting you there pretty quickly. So without further ado, jump back here, rocket loader, what does it do? Uh, when you set it to automatic, what this is going to do is any JavaScript that's being called within your website, whether it's a you know just a static website or it's a WordPress website, is it's going to uh, take all of that JavaScript, even, even the JavaScript that's being loaded from your plugins, and as a proxy, it's going to say, nope, I'm going to put all of this JavaScript in the footer instead of putting it in the header so that I can load all of this maybe more important CSS and general uh, markup before we get to the, the more fancy stuff, the more JavaScript interactive elements that might be uh, at play on the website. So um, usually a great idea to enable it, but um, uh, caution or a little, you know, um, I forget what I'm trying to say here, but uh, an element of caution that I would recommend um, with this option here is that when you do turn it on, just double check that things are, are working properly. Mainly your forms, uh, gravity forms within WordPress, I've noticed an issue with uh, turning this on with and with certain plugins is sometimes it just does not work uh, out of the box. In a lot of cases, it, it does just fine. So just double check that when you're running a website, maybe specifically WordPress, I've noticed issues with, um, just make sure that when you turn this on, that you know everything's working as it should. Double check, things aren't cached, you know, open up an incognito window in you know, Google Chrome, and then check those things there as well, just to make sure that you're not getting um, you know, a false representation of what your site looks like currently after turning this on. But almost always, I would say, let's say 90% of the time, this works pretty much out of the box. But as you can see, it is still in beta. Uh, at the time of this video, it might not uh, be in beta for you any longer, which is probably a good thing, but uh, it, it is kind of hit and miss uh, sometimes. So um, speed options, again, I usually enable all three of these options and throw on rocket loader and instantly see like a 10% uh, increase of my GT metrics report. Caching, so almost always set it to new query string. And as far as browser caching is concerned, almost always set it to eight days. Uh, GT metrics, as mentioned before, it's their recommendation that it at least be set to eight days. So that's usually what I set that to. All these other options I don't normally worry about. And in general, I think that that pretty much covers uh, most of what I recommend setting up. So that SSL certificate, the speed options here, the caching here as well. You can set up some general page rules, um, but in most cases you don't need to do that. Networking, I usually don't worry about too much at all. Traffic, again. There's some options like Argo. I think it's a, it's built on a per uh, site basis. It has been proven to show a pretty good increase of speed on a couple of websites that we have enabled it for. So if you're okay with paying $5 per site plus 10 cents per every gigabyte of transfer, then it might be a good idea just to throw that on. So uh, yeah, uh, Argo maybe load balancing. Normally don't recommend uh, enabling this, but I haven't played around with it enough to be honest with you. Um, DigitalOcean has a pretty good system set up for load balancing as, uh, as well already, so I don't know if this plays well with it or not. But to be honest with you, I might have to just explore that a bit more and get back to you guys at a later time. Customize, in general, I usually don't use this stuff either. Uh, usually this is a lot of stuff that you can set uh, on your own pretty easily at the server level. Same thing with apps. A lot of the times you can set this up pretty easily by just um, adding a record and so on and so forth. So um, yeah, I don't really fool around with too many of those things. Scrape Shield. 
Uh, yeah, so let's actually talk about this. So I'm glad that this is on. This didn't used to be activated by default, but uh, a really nice feature of Cloudflare is email obfuscation, which means that gone are the days where if you have, you know, my email at my email address.com on your website, that bots are going to be able to crawl that website, grab that email address, throw you into a uh, directory, sell your email address, and all of a sudden you're starting to get spam. So with obfuscation on, it's going to take your email address and just kind of, you know, kind of obfuscate it or, you know, encrypt it to a certain degree by changing things around. Server side excludes automatically hide specific content from sp specific visitors. That sounds great to me. I'm going to leave that on, which apparently it's on by default. And then hot link protection. So in a lot of cases, you might have some original images on your website. Turn that on if that's the case so you can keep people from being able to link directly to your website uh, images. So yeah, that covers in a nutshell in a pretty quick fashion all of the ins and outs of Cloudflare, the settings that I recommend using. Again, as I mentioned previously, if you're WordPress, um, developing WordPress-specific websites, highly recommend watching my WordPress uh, videos on WordPress development, where if you're using Trellis, the um, you know component of the Roots.io framework, um, a lot of this lets encrypt, a lot of this uh, Cloudflare stuff is set up a lot easier uh, when using that type of workflow. So I hope that answers all your questions. If you, if you have, if it hasn't and you have some more questions, feel free to leave those in the comments section below. Thanks so much.